So you think, by any chance, that someone who's not good at cleaning their work thoroughly, or not keeping it up to speed, or neither, is bad and doesn't realize the fact that it has to be done? Well, maybe that's true if they're lying about it, but that's not true if they're telling the truth about the fact that their rememberability is reduced. The area in the pie chart you see marked in screen green, that's how much ability to remember in your genus you must have, at minimum, in order to complete your work at your workplace with both requirements of fast and thorough at the same time. If you were to have any less than this, speed and thoroughness will never work at the same time no matter what. And that's the truth. Keep that in mind. If you take a look here at this chart, you can see kind of how the management of a shift is going. Over across, as you can see, it tells kind of when the most critical hours are and how the rememberability functions. The least critical is here at the blue end, and that's the morning, whereas the most critical is in the evening. And so therefore, as you can see, and it all depends on the time in which the place is open or which which needs you the most, and it all depends on which you can fit into best. If your memorability is between 75 and 80 percent, your best bet would be not to go past the noon hours, whereas if it's between 80 and 85 percent, it would be best not to go past maybe 1 or 2 o'clock. If it's um, between 85 and 90, 2 o'clock might be your best bet. 4 o'clock would be best if you're between 90 and 95, and between 95 and 100, you could manage the eating shift just fine. It's pretty easy to tell. These percents have a way of telling you things that you've never thought thought of or If we think we have a right to make our working trainees look stupid just because they have trouble with speed and thoroughness on the job site, it puts a dent in their system which makes them think they're stupid over having no way to function better. It gets more chaotic on both the job sites and the training facility. The trainee learns less to a point of possibly regretting being employed at all. It ends up costing the training organization their business and possibly them having jobs at all. Trainees go out of their minds to a point of causing injury to others or liability to places in the community. Trainees end up causing their trainers to lose their job through the liability of what happened on the job site. The job training company ends up having to pay all of their pension to the audiologist so that more closure hearing aids are made for year-long resolution plan users. That leads here into the hall of shame, as you can see here at the very bottom. Now, if we take the time to understand that repair to a person's inability to do their work fast and thorough is for the neural business to do, trainees feel smart rather than stupid over having no way to function better. It's not nearly as is chaotic on either the job site or the training facility. The trainee learns more being able to eventually become eligible for real employment. The training organization remains with their business and having more of a job is needed. Trainees aren't nearly as distressed and they won't go out of their minds to where there is a cause of injury to others or liability to places in the community. Trainees won't be as likely to cause their trainer to lose their job through the liability of what happened on the job site. The job company and the audiologist won't have to meet with pension payments nearly as much overpaying for year-long resolution plan users who use those types of hearing aids. And then more people get medals for being a little thoughtful of that. But here's something I want you to understand. It is never acceptable to just impatiently pull somebody into a training of completing work at speed and thoroughness on any training job site whatsoever, and then kind of making them feel bad, degrading them just because they're having a hard time. You do not declare passive non-compliance under any circumstances, because that passive non-compliance is you who's talking about how bad they are. And it's you who's going to get punished for it, not them. They didn't do anything. If you think it really concerns you, you can't do the job, then don't do it. Leave it to somebody else. There's plenty of other people who like working with others better than you if you don't like them. That's just the way it goes. 